All right, let's discuss our last two periodic trends. Electronegativity, this is defined as the ability of an atom to attract shared electrons to itself in a covalent bond. You'll probably recall that this is very important for determining whether your covalent bonds are polar or nonpolar. Again, we're able to relate this to our periodic trend for the electrostatic force. Remember that if you increase the electrostatic force, you're increasing the ability of your nucleus to hold on to its valence electrons. This is actually very similar to electronegativity, except you're just looking at holding on to valence electrons, specifically in shared electrons. So of course, if you're better at holding on to your valence electrons, you're also going to have a higher electronegativity. So electronegativity and electrostatic force are proportional to each other. In terms of the periodic trend then, as you go from left to right across the periodic table, that means that your nucleus is better at attracting and holding on to its valence electrons. That similarly means you have an increase in electronegativity. If you go down a column on the periodic table, your electrostatic force decreases. Your nucleus is now holding on to its valence electrons less tightly. So that means it is less able to attract valence electrons to itself in a covalent bond. Now, one other thing that's very important to have memorized for MCAT is this mnemonic for the most electronegative elements on the periodic table, Funkel Brischk. So again, these are the most electronegative elements on the periodic table. F, O, N, C, L, B, R, I, S, C, H. So of course, starting from the left, fluorine is the most electronegative element on the periodic table. Then oxygen is the second, nitrogen is the third, and so forth. Funkel Brischk. Good for you to keep in mind. All right, so our last trend is looking at metallic character. And this is essentially looking at the difference between non-metals and metals and everything in between. So what you need to know for the MCAT is the difference in chemical and physical properties between metals and non-metals. Non-metals, we say, are brittle solids that are poor conductors of heat and electricity. And that makes sense. So if you have a non-metal, that means these are compounds that if you, you know, apply forces to them, like if, if you try to compress them or if you try to pull them, they're just going to break apart. And similarly, if you try to transfer heat using a non-metal, it's also not going to work very well. In terms of the chemical properties, non-metals have very high electronegativity, ionization energy, and electron affinity. In general, these are atoms that really like electrons. So as a result, in chemical reactions, they tend to gain or share electrons, because in both cases, they are able to get more electrons to themselves. For metals, they have a number of physical properties. Number one, they are hard solids. And you see this all the time with a lot of material all around the world, right? So a lot of equipment, you know, laptops, they're made of metals because metals are very strong, sturdy materials. They are good conductors of heat and electricity. That's no surprise since all of our electrical wires are made of metals. And they also exhibit properties of malleability and ductility. These are terms that you definitely want to associate with metals as well. Malleable simply means that these are compounds that are able to deform under compressive stress. So what that means is if you take metal and you apply forces to compress it, the metal will deform to form flat sheets of metal. Ductility is the opposite. Instead of applying compressive forces, you're going to apply tensile forces pulling on both sides of the metal. So if you pull on metal compounds, they won't just break. You can actually stretch metals into metal wires. So those are the physical properties. For chemical properties, metals in general have simple reactions. 
they want to achieve noble gas configuration and they generally do that by losing valence electrons and forming cations. All right. So now in terms of the metal property periodic trend, you could probably figure this out based on what we were discussing, that if non-metals have high electronegativity, high ionization energy, and high electron affinity, that means that non-metals must be on the right side of the periodic table. So as you go from left to right across the periodic table, you have a decrease in metallic properties. And the same thing, as you go down a column from the periodic table, you're going to have a decrease in electronegativity, electron affinity, and ionization energy. So going down a column, you're becoming less like nonmetals. So that must mean you're increasing your metallic uh, properties. Now, this shouldn't be a huge surprise for you because you probably recall looking at the periodic table that nonmetals are the elements on the top right side, whereas metals are all the elements on the left side of the periodic table. So that fits the trend that we've described.